G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, this video is just a bit of information for newbies and uh, well, today we're looking at uh, dial test indicator gauges, which is what this little jigger here is. Now, these are a great little device. And uh, when you start off um, with your uh, hobby lathe work or whatever, obviously you need some sort of accurate measuring device to position work in the in the truck and uh, measure run out of jobs you're, you're putting in and uh, aligning your uh, your tail stock on your on your lathe and stuff like that. So you've got a choice of either dial test indicator like this or a plunger type dial indicator like this. This one's a Michitoyo, $65 for one like that. And this one's a cheapy Chinese one which I started off with which was about, I don't know, 20 bucks. They both work good. So, um, you know, starting off, it's uh, it's quite okay to buy the cheap stuff. It, it'll do the job for a while until you, uh, you drop it, <laughs> which is what happened to this one. This was my original test indicator, which now it works, but it's got stiction, so the repeatability is not there. Uh, the repeatability is basically the thing that determines the accuracy. Well, one of the things that determines the accuracy, um, it, the needle should always come back to the same position. Um, as it travels. So cheap is, cheap can be okay um, but if you're going to buy cheap I wouldn't buy this particular one ne next time around um, I bought one the next step up which is I think a better gauge uh, more responsive well it seems a little bit more responsive and the bigger dial even though they can all measure to varying degrees of accuracy the bigger the dial the, you can read part graduations with them but of course the bigger you go, which is the problem with these things, is they, they then foul, can foul the chuck jaws and things like that that you're trying to measure. So why should I have a test indicator over a, over a just a plunger type indicator? Well when you first start off you think, you know, ooh, a test indicator, that sounds a bit sort of, uh, ooh, a bit intimidating. It's going to test my work, which, uh, which may not be very good. <laughs> But it's not, nothing like that, it's just a name, it's just they call these test indicators, whereas these are called plunger type uh, dial indicators. They both work on a similar principle, they've got a little, a little plunger that goes in up and down, which works on a rack, which moves the needle. On these, the rack goes up and down, and instead of having a direct acting plunger, they have a little, little fulcrum uh, which drives the rack. And uh, the difference, big difference is these will uh, generally have much more travel because being direct action they're not limited by the, the, the small amount of movement that the actual little probe can transcribe on, on a test indicator. So these are good for really fine work, really fine work where you want to get into stuff that these can't do because they're too big and bulky and um, being able to change the, the angle of the tip, you just do that, you, you can just Put a bit of pressure on and you can move them so you can actually position the tip it won't hurt it if you go gently and a uh, little clutch in there lets you move that around and uh, you can then position the probe so it's at uh, the right um, angle to the to the work that you're measuring which should always be uh, parallel um, so you always put it parallel with the work surface and set it so that the probe is uh, in the at rest position some of these are double acting, this one's double acting, it will measure up or down with the probe. This one here which is a peacock is a, is a single action, uh, it'll only measure in one swing up or you can move a little lever on the side and you can measure down. So that worked quite okay except you have to just uh, flick the lever. Now quality wise what's the best to buy? Well um, you can spend a, <laughs> any as much money as you want to, but at the end of the day it's not going to make a huge amount of difference for a home hobbyist. Uh, the Chinese ones measure okay. The weak point of the Chinese ones generally is that the mounting system isn't as well finished or as, as nicely made as on the Mitsu Toyos or the, the high quality ones. Um, the high quality ones sometimes, I mean some of the Swiss stuff has, uh, this is not, this is Japanese, it's a peacock, but some of the Swiss stuff have a, uh, a pivoting uh, mount in the back that you can um, swing at 90 degrees so you can uh, avoid using the dovetails. This one's got a 
a permanent mount on the back. You've still got dovetails here, and uh, it saves uh, fiddling around with, uh, with the dovetail setup. Uh, the dovetails can either use a pincher type a grip, which is uh, which is what came with the peacock that I'm using on this one, or well, they use a screw up type, which uh, basically slides on, and then you just screw the the shaft, and you put it in your mount and hold it. Um, goes on there as well, and it'll also go on the front. You can actually mount it on the front as well. So there's a variety of positions. Um, Mounts. Make sure that if you get a mount separately, that the the, the diameter of the of the mount will actually accommodate the diameter of the shafts, the mounting shafts that come with the little indicator. Uh, there doesn't seem to be much of a standard in them, from what I've seen. There probably is for the good quality stuff, but they seem to vary a hell of a lot. So uh, just be aware of that. If you buy a combination unit, and this was the original combination unit, this came with the stand. They're really good. Um, this is actually quite good value, this little unit, provided you know you look after it. Um, the stand is excellent because it's so compact and it's magnetic and it gets right into stuff. You don't want anything too big and bulky with the test indicator. It's not like a, uh, a dial indicator, you know, plunger type where um, you might be reaching over, you know, crankshaft journals and stuff like that. Uh, these generally you wouldn't use it for that sort of work. So. Uh, yeah, the little cheap little um, stands that come with them are, are really good. This is excellent. And uh, there you have it. So what would I buy? Would I buy one of these or one of these when I start off? Well, if you can only afford one, I'd buy this for sure. This is Because this will do internal work. This will do external. This will do faces. It will do everything. Um, these are good. They're more robust. Uh, but you can't do internal work, small internal work with them. And uh, for that reason, I wouldn't... Uh, I'd get this first, but as I said, they're both so cheap, I'd just get one of each and be done with it. So there you have it. Um, they're my thoughts on them. Um, that's it, folks. They're uh, something that you should get, and certainly uh, they're nothing to be uh, worried about using. The danger with them is that they tend, you can easily snag you know, your shirt sleeve or on these things or on the probe tip or... Uh, you know, you've got to be careful with them. They don't like being dropped, and uh, I've dropped that one. And uh, once they're dropped, they're never the same again. You can adjust the little probe tip on the end. There's a little screw there to uh, adjust the tension. And with a bit of fiddling, you can um, get them accurate again, hopefully. Like all this stuff, you should never oil any of these probes or plungers. Leave them all dry. If they get sticky, just uh, wash them off with a bit of alcohol or methylated spirits. But don't oil them, because the oil will just make them uh, um, sticky, put stiction in them, and you don't want any of that. So, there you go, folks. Hope that was some use to you. Just a bit of information, quick video. Leading up to Christmas, you could buy yourself a new present, new toy. And what better than a nice little test indicator. So, see you next time, and uh, cheers for now.